Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. As we gather in this Easter season, we're reminded of the triumph of Christ over death that he invites us to through his mercy. So trusting in his mercy, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, by your death you conquered death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your resurrection you draw us all to new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us all to eternity in your Father's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One, and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins and is not, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we make sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. She has reference to the road to Emmaus. And in that encounter, on that way, the disciples initially walking in great despair, wondering what would become of them and all the hopes and dreams that they had had and of the one that had called them, who to their knowledge was still in his tomb. They encounter him, and yet they do not recognize him on that road. But yet... When they come to know him in the breaking of the bread is when they come back to recount everything with great passion to their friends. And it's in that moment that Jesus comes to them yet again. As they remember and recount what their encounter had been, he is made present in their midst anew. How often in our own lives 
Are we so caught up in our pain, our doubt, uncertainty, our suffering, that we lose track of the fact that Jesus is with us, walking with us, opening our minds in the midst of us, speaking to our hearts? Oftentimes, like these disciples, we don't really understand the significance of it until after the fact. We look back and we say, oh, that's where God was moving in my life then. I just didn't know it. But the more we can recall those moments, even after the fact, the more, just like these disciples and their companions, we come to see that Christ is truly present still here and now in our midst. And that all that has taken place in our journey with God has purpose even as we move forward. For as Jesus proclaims to them, you are a witness of these things of the truth of the forgiveness of sins that is to be preached in his name to all the nations, that that wasn't something that had been. That was something that was still very much real, still calling them forward and leading them on. So let us be mindful this Easter season of where Christ has touched our lives. And in those memories, trust that he is still with us here and now as our risen Lord leading us to new hope. Together let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now to the God of Abraham and Sarah, the God of Isaac and Rebekah, and the God of all our ancestors in faith, who hear us when we call out in need. For the church, that we have made a compassionate and forgiving people as we preach repentance for the goodness, forgiveness of sins to all the nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may always grow in wisdom and insight, and that they may be committed to the truth as they exercise their leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we may open our minds and hearts to the truth that all people are children of God, so that we may fight racism, sexism, and any evil that mocks this sacred truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and farm workers, and all who plant and tend to the crops that feed us, feed and nourish us throughout the world, throughout the year, that they may realize the fruits of their labors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are preparing to receive their first communion, for all of us, when we receive the Eucharist, that we may know our Lord is in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in silence in our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have blessed your people through all generations. Continue to bless us as we lift our needs to you. Listen to our prayers and grant our needs through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. (laughs) 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.